What's going on, everyone? So what's the deal with DeAndre Russell? Now, more likely than not, he's probably going to get traded at some point. Lakers have been trying to move him since last season. Uh, he's an expiring contract. Right now, no one really seems interested in trying to trade for DeAndre Russell. But once you get closer to the trade deadline, teams want to start getting off a of salary. You get teams that thought they were going to be good that aren't. You get teams that want to be bad but are actually kind of good. And you kind of get it from both ways where, you know, a team goes, hey, you know what? Let's just kind of reset here. Uh, and at that point, I think you'll see D'Angelo Russell kind of his value be raised just for the expiring contract, as well as maybe several other uh, key pieces, right? Especially like even long-term salary, guys like Rui, Gabe Vincent, guys like that, that'll only have one year left um, going into the following season, not this season coming up. Teams might be like, oh, instead of paying a guy for four years, we pay this guy for a year and it expires. So it's things like that to look out for. But the reason I want to bring up, talk about D'Lo specifically, is as of right now, unless some, again, some trade happens or something before training camp, he's on the roster and our third best player, right? I mean, he was fantastic in the regular season last year. I mean, historically great last year. Now, obviously playoff time, little rough, but I've even talked about, like, is D'Lo getting more comfortable, right? So, like, obviously regular season D'Lo is excellent, but playoff D'Lo, we saw in the first playoff run, like, little dicey, and then we got that Denver series, and he was basically unplayable, right? People also forget, though, that he was good in those other series, right? He had a couple dicey games, but very good, especially in uh, that Memphis, uh, uh, yeah, Memphis series, that Grizzly series, I mean, he single-handedly saved us. So, again, little dicey, but not great by any stretch. Then you got into this past uh, playoffs, and he was much better. He still wasn't great, but in like half the games played, right? Two and a half, three games. He was actually, he was very, very good in one game, and then good in the others, right? So, how do you improve? How do you get better? just through the process of game in and game out, night in and night out in the playoffs. More, like before this, he was never a perennial playoff player. He was never like going on deep playoff runs. Now he's in the spot where he is. So maybe he'll start getting a little more comfortable. Will he even be on the roster come time? But again, he is a big, significant piece for this Lakers team. And yet JJ Redick has like hardly mentioned him. And all the reports and news and everything that's coming out, like, doesn't even mention him. We keep getting constant reports about Max Christie and how he's supposed to play a lot and he's supposed to play a big role and he's supposed to do this, that, and the other. Austin Reeves, right, is supposed to take the next step and J.J. Redick is getting ready to unlock him and he's going to be this, like, star. He's going to be the clear-cut third guy. Like, that's why the Lakers don't want to trade him because J.J. Redick has a ton of plans for Austin Reeves. Rui Hachimura even, we're hearing things, right? J.J. Redick talking about how, hey, look, uh, Rui Hachimura, I'm going to make him an elite rebounder. I believe he can be an elite, elite rebounder, excellent cutter, shoot the ball, all that stuff, right? You hear everybody, Dalton Connect. As soon as Dalton Connect was drafted, right, J.J. Redick's at the whiteboard drawing up, you know, uh, uh, just plays and stuff for him, right? All these various actions and stuff, right? You keep hearing about all these guys, that are supposed to play a key part and supposed to play a key role, except for D'Angelo Russell, right? And he's supposed to be our starting point guard, right? He's supposed to be, again, our third best player. And it's just, you would think more than anybody on this team, D'Angelo Russell would be, one, you know, just jumping at the opportunity for J.J. Redick. But J.J. Redick, you would imagine, would be you know, enamored with D'Angelo Russell because of D'Lo being a volume quality three-point shooter. Not talking about a guy that's, you know, 42% on like three attempts. Talk about guys like 42% on like eight attempts. Right? Like, it's huge. And the the way that he can shoot, uh, you know, in motion, right? He can be a movement shooter. He can shoot in rhythm. He can catch a shoot. He can do it all, Right? And you got a guy in J.J. Redick who wants to raise the volume of three-point attempts on this team. 
wants to run a five-out offense, wants to do all these things that would greatly benefit D'Angelo Russell. And all you've heard is how J.J. Redick really wants to play LeBron James off-ball more, that he doesn't want LeBron dominating the basketball, right? Well, D'Angelo Russell's our second-best playmaker. Right? D'Angelo Russell's our best playmaker besides uh, outside of LeBron James, right? So, like, if anybody should be getting, like, some real noise and attention. It's D'Angelo Russell, and he's just not, right? Now, again, more likely than not, he's going to be traded, right? And even if he is great in the regular season again, you got to imagine that the Lakers are probably still good. Like, let's let's say he's... Let's say he's a 23-point-a-game guy during the regular season, right? He just takes some strides because playing with J.J. Reddick, J.J. Reddick's, you know, utilizing him. Say he's, you know, 23-4-8, and eight, right? And he's just killing it out there, right? I still believe that the Lakers would trade him. Even if he did take a leap and took a step, I still think the Lakers would trade him. Now, I don't think that they would just trade him just for fun. Like, I don't think that they would just trade him for just, you know, the 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 thrill of it. Like, no, I think that you would, if a trade is there, because you're almost better off if nothing's there, just letting his contract expire. And then LeBron James kind of, you know, being able to restructure his contract and take it from there, right? Like, and now you could potentially have all this salary space to go and sign several uh, free agents. So... You know, again, don't just trade D'Lo just for the fun of it. Don't just trade D'Lo just to trade D'Lo. But if the right deal is on the table, I don't, I like, unless, like, D'Lo is, like, 30, 10, and 10 or something crazy. Like, unless it's just, like, we, we're, we almost have no choice but to take the chance on D'Angelo Russell. I do think that the Lakers are probably looking at it as, like, we're not going to be fooled again, right? We're not going to, we're not, we already went down this road twice. We're not going to have it a third time, right? Unless we absolutely have to. But again, like D'Lo, I like D'Lo. I mean, I've made arguments and defend D'Lo regularly. I've talked about how, you know, it makes more sense to trade Austin Reeves than it does D'Angelo Russell. Now, obviously, maybe that changes. Right? Maybe, you know, if, if Austin Reeves can get back to, you know, a version or better, supposedly he's he's gonna be great this season. Right? He's supposed to take that next step. Right? JJ Reddick's supposed to kind of mold him and evolve him into this all-star caliber guy. I'm all for it. If that can happen, let's go, right? Because better Austin Reeves is the better the Lakers are. Just like the better D'Lo is, the better the Lakers are. But D'Lo, again, is our best playmaker. He's our best shooter on volume. Is he, is he a liability on defense? Yeah, but so is like half the guys on this team, right? So is Rui, so is Austin Reeves, so is LeBron James most of the time, right? Like, it's just how the roster makeup is, right? And until you actually get guys that make more sense as like legit three Andy or, you know, two-way players, then yeah, I mean, you, 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 D'Lo's one of, if not the best we have, right? And I know, and I get it. A lot of people are really down on him because of the playoff performances, and I, I completely understand it, right? It's frustrating, right? It's like if D'Lo, you know, was just like a hair better, you know, how do those two Denver series look, right? Like, not even if he's just significantly, it's just if he was just a little better, right? Like, because all those series were so tight, so close, and him kind of being the third guy, it's like, man, if he could have just have been just, just, you know, five points <laughs> better, Right, it would two baskets for him. He was five points better, right? Lakers might have won those two Denver series, right? But you know, again, I, I think the more that you play, the more you comfortable you get, the more I think there there's progress, is my point. Right? Again, I don't I'm not saying you don't trade D Go ahead, trade D Like, you know, it, again, it has to make sense. Just like Austin Reeves, I'm not saying trade Austin Reeves just for fun. No, I'm saying if it makes sense, right? Like DeJounte Murray. I was like, why are we holding on to Austin Reeves like Austin Reeves is Michael Jordan in his prime? Like he's not, right? Like I like Austin Reeves a lot. DeJounte Murray is the better player. And if you can win the trade by trading Austin Reeves, then do it, right? You'd still have D'Angelo Russell who you could just move off ball and he shoots a higher percentage at a higher volume. Like, to me, it was a no-brainer. Like, what, what what's the, the holdup here? And ultimately, that didn't happen. But, you know, I, I do think that there, there are pros and cons with all the guys, but, like, particularly with D'Angelo Russell, and there is this level of frustration. But 
it's just odd that you're hearing about everybody else. Everyone else is getting love, shine, and attention. Everyone else is, is supposed to take this next step. Everyone else is supposed to be better than they were last year. Oh, man, you thought Reeves was, was bad last year? Don't even worry. He's coming. You thought Rui was at great? Oh, man, he's going to be, you know, prime Kawhi Leonard next season. Like, it's just, like, you hear all these, like, crazy, exaggerated, like, man, J.J. Reddick's going to change the, the game for these guys. But you don't hear any of that stuff with D'Lo. I just think it's crazy. I think it's a little odd, personally. But, no, we'll see. See how it all plays out. Um, again, I mean, the Lakers, we all know that the Lakers are looking to trade D'Lo. It's just, wouldn't you, while he's on the team, want to hype him up a little bit? Right? Just like a smidge. I don't know. Call me crazy. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel with your thoughts? Um, do you agree? Do you think like, yeah, like you should be hyping him up. You should be talking about improving him and making him better just like everyone else because he's on the team right now. Right? And then until that changes, you, you, you want to have, you want the best version of D-Lo possible. Um, do you think? No, like it doesn't matter. Just trade it either way or we're going to let him go after the season regardless. How do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.